Coming back, coming back. All right. Welcome, Terence. Yes, I remember you. Hello. Hello. So how is li life up there? Amazing. You don't need any kind of drug there. You can just get what you want through thought processes and intention. So that is a different way to get the things that you want other than through um, using chemicals. I am um, I'm studying um, resonances in DNA and morphogenic field. Yeah. And as I listen to your uh, talks, you're, you were there already. You mentioned a lot of insights into the DNA resonances and um, of course, yeah, uh, holography. Uh, when, if you use chemicals properly, if you use them to s suit your needs and not just for recreation, then you can see into other fields of science and thought processes into a greater dimensions and, and bring things into a greater clarity. You have to use chemicals intelligently. You, I know you can use them very unintelligently and be in trouble, but you can use them very intelligently and have some very, very nice outcomes with some very deep information. So when you travel in through that way, it, it's, you just sort of have to understand that you're doing this for the greater good and not for your greater good necessarily, but for the greater good, the greater um, accomplishments of whatever it is that is going on around you. And to, to be able to do that in a, a positive way, in a way that is able to be brought into an understanding by others, you have to be very careful on how you, you're looking at things. So you, once you're in the drug state, once you're in that uh, changed thought process, you are also guided into an area. And if you don't want to go to that place, then you don't. You can stop that and go to the area that you want to go or go to a different area. Sometimes it doesn't go to the place where you want it to go. And that's the frustrating part about chemicals with the brain. It goes to one portion of the brain before another portion. You have different outcomes with different places in the brain that are stimulated. The neuron access, the synapse, everything has to come into balance. But you learn a lot about yourself through these uses. And you learn a lot about um, where the chemicals are going in some ways, because it opens up those areas. Uh, one of the ideas you um, promoted was that natural drugs um, bring you into the space which is already populated uh, by the experience. And there is a lot of other people who have been there, they created a field there of um, which is smart and conscious and new drugs bring you somewhere where is like nobody has been before so it's a very different experience exactly now, now looking from from above do you confirm that yes i i actually do because um i've experienced it and actually when you look at it from this direction you see yes these new chemicals have brought me to a place where the old chemicals could not, or the old drugs could not, because the old drugs were, um, they were in a pattern. They had pattern-like activities, and the new drugs did not have the same pattern. Does that make sense to you? Sure. And so when you're looking at the old drugs and it's taking you to places that you are familiar with in, in the, the group consciousness, even in the consciousness of, in, in the populated portions of the brain where thought processes are already, have taken place and have already 
uh, made decisions, already have discovered and decided things, but there are still some things undecided. Still, there are they are still working in that cognitive area of the frontal lobe in some ways. But once you get something new, they will they will ex they will go to a place that is unexperienced, that is a new place because they effectually touch on a different portion of the brain in a, and because they are a different kind of chemical. Right. Uh, you were also um, promoting the idea of virtual reality. Oh, yes. And I tried to visit uh, VR space um, and it's still very primitive, it's still very primitive. So basically the uh, people who make uh, those games are, are very primitive. And the games are basically working mostly on the lower chakras. Yes. There, is, there is no virtual reality for higher function. You were dreaming about what game you would make, but you were looking from a different perspective and educated, but mo mostly programmers who actually created, they, they created for, create the games for themselves and the very, there is very little of, uh, and they work for the, for the wider public. So the, the virtual reality so far is mostly fight and, um, and violence. There is not much more. Yes, I agree. Virtual reality, you actually could live in virtual reality and not know it. You, where you live now, how you function right now, is that virtual reality? Is that God's virtual reality that you are living in? Do you know that you are not living in virtual reality? You, you do see what has been created by the world for as an example of virtual reality, but that is very primitive, as you have said. So now, is it possible to bring that into higher levels so that you can't even tell the difference between your reality and virtual reality? This is what I am talking about. I am talking about a realm, a, a way to create a virtual reality that you can actually live in. We are getting there. We are getting there. Um, I see that. The, uh, the secret governments, they, they um, radically promote the idea of chipping everybody and um, mind controlling everybody. So that's kind of virtual reality. Getting uh, and developing brain computer interfaces so people can be plugged in, plugged in into uh, artificial intelligence, virtual reality. So that's already happening. Yes. The thing is, they're taking their chips and uh, uh, tapping into uh, mind control in this reality, making it a virtual reality because what they are, what they are chipping into is, is looking at this reality that you live in, but changing it, how they function and how they react to this reality. That is a virtual reality that's somewhat different than what I'm talking about, but it is actually realistic to, to say that they can do that. They can put something in you that will tap into another portion of this reality that is not the reality that you're actually living, but make it something other than what you are living now and change your whole thought process about the reality that you're living in, but using the same visual concepts that you have right in front of you. It's called augmented augmented reality. Uh, yes, so, augmented reality. Yes. So yeah, I mean their main uh, uh, immediate goal is to create super soldiers which are controlled from the distance by. A computerized system. So super soldiers exist. Yeah, and um, and uh, but 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 
you know, even in uh, more, uh, China leads the way because they they uh, monitor everybody and manipulate everybody very uh, openly. It's part of their system, and they are not ashamed of that. So it looks like the whole planet is moving in that direction. So can you reflect on, you know, put your judgment on it? Is it something which we could uh, enjoy? Well, you're going to have to learn to enjoy it because if it is moving in that direction and you don't enjoy it, then that will mean that you will be fighting against that system and that system will destroy you. And so you have to learn to live within the confines of your system. When you're looking at virtual reality, let me put it this way. When you're looking at virtual reality, how far does virtual reality actually go? Does it go to the ends of the world or does it just go to the ends of the optic nerves? It is that you can see and know a whole reality just inside your own head. So therefore, with this kind of reality that they are creating, it is that you must uh, give into it, fight it, or, or know how to deal with it. Because the kind of virtual reality that's coming will be at the end of your optic nerves. Right, right. And we, on, on top of that, we have that uh, pandemic with the virus. Are you following the news? Um, I look at this planet now and then and go, um, yes, I'm glad I'm not there. But I, because I see where it's heading and it's not a free, it's, it's just not where I want to be. But it will pan out eventually, I'm, I'm thinking, because I've seen other worlds go through this and pan out and make a difference and, and all that. But right now it's in that place in between that you just don't want to be. But you know, some of us are here still. Yes, I see that. And um, so I think that possible outcomes are from, from that evil plan is first people will awaken because when they, when they see that their governments are colluding uh, you know, very anti-human things. Uh, people see that the governments go against their own rules, basically. They, you know, they taught us to play by the rules and then they violate the rules. So that's, that's you know. So uh, when some people awaken, which more, many, many more will, some will join the good side and some will join the bad side. Which side is which? You have to figure that out. But the thing is, they will open their eyes and say, ah, I see what's going on. I want to support this side. I want to support that side. It will not all be a spiritual awakening. It will be a reality awakening, that they are not in the same reality they were in, were in before. There will some have spiritual awakenings. Absolutely, you're right. That will happen too. And that means moving into a higher thought process of spiritual thought. But not all awakenings will be spiritual. They'll be reality checks. They will go from this reality to another reality because that's, they don't know about the spiritual side. They don't know about what spirit has to offer. They only know what reality has to offer. And so they're going to open their eyes to this reality, that reality, or the realities around them. Some will find that spiritual awakening. You're absolutely right. But it's not going to be what you think. I don't know what I think. I, um, <laughs> I, I just like that, uh, you know, these democratic countries, they create very nice people. They create people who believe in ideals and once the people see what's uh, that their system is not ideal, then they would awaken. They just, when the um, uh, mind mind washing, when my, uh, brainwashing crashes, when they just realize that they were brainwashed, they would awaken anyway. But the other side is that 
they're going into the morality, spirituality, and things of that nature. And when that doesn't work out, where do they go? You see, each side has, has a, a ceiling. They can only go so far on each side with the belief systems carried by Democratic and Republican. The spiritual side has a higher ceiling. It goes beyond both of them. It goes above and beyond. And it sees actually a greater view of all things with God's eyes. But you see, with one vision or the other, it's, it, it fails. Uh, do you see um, the virus, the COVID virus, does it make, um, does it change the mind of the, um, I don't know, mechanistically, chemically, does it actually transform people? The, the virus itself, I, I do not think that it changes people's minds. I think that it ch changes how they feel because it stays in their system afterwards for a long time or like the measles, it, will, it can come back in another form. There are some versions of it that do that. Not all versions of the COVID virus do that. There are several different versions of it from different, different places. You think it's from one place? No, it's from many places because everybody has their own version of it. So the thing is, you have to take your mind off of that because it is, causing fear, it's causing um, separations, it's causing a lot of things that are not normal, and it's causing uh, the governments to be able to manipulate the people much more easily. So that's what it's there for, basically. So, but it's not against, it wasn't created to begin be against any certain person or any certain political view, it's there for the cabal, if you want to talk about the cabal. It's there for them. So I just wonder, like, uh, we already learned that cabal is very organized, but I wonder if the public figures, they are aware. I think maybe many of them are, are lost and they don't actually know who is above them and who is manipulating well, them. That will be a reality awakening for them. When they awaken, they will awaken to another level of understanding of what the world is going through. And that will be the political awakening for some of them. Some of them will have a spiritual awakening, but many of them will go into another reality of thought that, uh-oh, what is happening here? We are really not in control. Yeah, like like the speakers, public speakers, um, like Bill Gates. Is he really? Does he really know what what he, who is above him? Is he of part of the cabal, not. or he's still mani being manipulated? I'm I'm not sure. Everyone is manipulated. The you will hear, hear people saying the cabal is this person, the, the cabal is that person, or it's it's a group of people that they can name. That's not the truth. The name of the people that are in the cabal will not be named. They are not in the internet. Their names will not be found. They are above that. They will push people like the Rockefellers or whatever. They'll push that name out there so that they can be blamed. They'll push Bill Gates' name out there so that he can be blamed. They'll push the names out in front of the news cameras so people can be blamed so they are not. Uh, demons, uh, recently, like, um, just listening to another uh, conspiracy theorist, I, I just heard that on the top there are demons. And I remember the demons from Hindu culture, they were, uh, you know, they were real, be real beings, more like aliens, but, you know, demon-like aliens, and uh, they are still in charge. Is it uh, true? Well, no, not in the sense that they are demons from the underworld that are in charge, but they have, some of these leaders may have demon possessions or asked for them. 
so that they could be brighter, smarter, more agile, whatever it is that they are wanting, they call on the dark side to bring that for them. So I don't think that they are actual demons. There's probably demonic action within them. And, and so that makes it demonic. Not all of them are like that. But some of them are. I just wonder, are demons actually negative? They seem like uh, decent aliens with their own uh, uh, set of oh, rules and I, their own pride and so on. So I'm not sure, you know, are these real demons? Are these real aliens? Who they are? Demons are what you make them out to be. They are what you believe that they, they are. That is how they were created, out of a belief system and out of drug use. You can, you can picture the darkest parts of your psyche when you are under drug um, influence. Some of these things were created out of the darkest fears of your heart. But what happens? Are these darkest fears of your heart just in your heart or are they real? They become real if you believe that they are. If, they, if you believe hard enough, you can create anything. And that is how they were created. And you believe how you believe about them. You can believe a demon is not bad and can be helpful. You can believe that a demon is only horrible and hateful. But in this reality that you live in and in this re universe, you can change reality. You have to understand reality is not solid. It is not a, a perfectly a perfect science, but your belief systems can create and destroy whatever is around you and whatever you believe. If you believe it strong enough, it, it is there. I can't hear you. Sorry. Uh, thank you. I'm continuing my research into, into DNA and um... Finally, I got to the point where I can see the sub-molecular structures which define intuition and logic, yes. which is very exciting. Yes. So, and um, I can see how DNA create, creates consciousness and creates time, if you look from, the, from this space, or how it connects to consciousness and creates time, if you look from the other space. Yes. So... Um, and obviously, the, the temptation is here to develop brain-computer interface and um, develop synthetic telepathy. Could you reflect on that? Is it uh, really dangerous, or is it, is it a natural way of, of pro progressing for the humanity? All right. You have, there is all kinds of synthetic things that you take in your body that is helpful in healing you and making you live longer. Some of these things are very helpful, but for other people is not helpful. So there are going to be those that will be able to interface and have a pseudo -tele telepathy, and it will not harm them, but it will actually build their psychic abilities in some ways. And this is something that's being experimented with at rate with right now. So therefore, as they are practicing and developing, of course, they're going to make some mistakes and there's going to be some madness. Somebody's going to be dri driven crazy because their third eye is going to fly open and this is going to bring too much information in. Pineal gland and, and body can't handle the information and they'll go mad. So you understand this is something that is under construction. It will be successful eventually, and it will not be harmful eventually. But right now, it is in a harmful state because it is still in the state of creation, in the state of flux, if you will, because they have not uh, done anything that can work with everyone. The, it can work with this person, but not with that person. It can work with this one, but not with that one. So because every single person is their own 
being and, and made up in their own special way, and their psyche reacts to their belief systems in a certain way, and your belief system does have something to do with your, um, your psychic energies and with how you handle your psychic energies. Some were taught that psychic energies are all negative and cannot be brought into a positive um, alignment with anything. And so therefore, if they were to be one of the people that were sampling this, they would be frightened, their fear would destroy uh, the whole the whole experiment so it wouldn't work for them those that are wide open in their thought processes thinking that their psyche can be uh, a great advancement to humanity or mankind those people it might work with all right thanks um switching to another topic similar i i was uh and for for the last year i was basically gave up on uh, trying to obtain government funding because um, my the topic of research was so far from what government funded but now the world becomes crazy enough so i i'm st i'm again kind of contemplating that government would fund my research how do you see it is it really worth wasting time on trying to obtain government funding for that research my personal thought is this i would never stop looking for government funding because there will be a moment in time when they realize this we could use this information we can definitely be uh, part of this information and that is when they give government funding is when it aligns with their purposes and thought processes and what you are doing will align with purposes and thought processes and you will get government funding there will be no question in my mind that eventually this will be going i want to fund that this is something that needs funded because look where it can go for us not necessarily for you you they they are happy to help you out they are happy to make it you be the one that discovers many things and touch on it but they will use that eventually because it is going to be since they funded it part of their uh their folder part of what they can use because you have taken money from them so yes you will get government funding i absolutely guarantee it i don't know when that will happen but it will happen thank you switching topic again um last month like August, I have trouble sleeping. Do you have any ideas why and uh, what can yes. be done? All right, there are certain reasons why people are not sleeping. Hundreds of reasons. Let me give you some of them. First of all, the Earth energies with the grand solar maximums, that affects sleep patterns, that affects physicality. So your the sun in the way that it's acting with the Earth right now is causing sleep patterns to be disrupted. Not only that, it causes earth patterns to be disrupted. So an another reason is that tension and stress on the body can also cause different interactions with the neurons and synapses in the brain. You can actually not be aware of how your brain is reacting to some of these things because you are trying to sleep. You are not trying to think about these things but remember a mind that keeps running and and doesn't stop that means synapse synapse activity is a uh, going uh, going on when you are not actually asking it to which means you are thinking without thinking and these are kinds of things that keep you awake also also if there are problematic things in your sideways experience let me explain what that means. Your sideways experience is from society, friends and family, and peers. This is all sideways in your world. It's all coming from the side. It's not coming from up here. It's not coming from down there. It's coming from the side. Do you know what I'm saying? Lateral, lateral. Lateral information, correct. It's going into the ear from here, from friends and families, 
society's peers or whatever. That can cause a lot of thought and can cause a lot of disturbance in your thought processes because it's not matching up with your belief system, it's not matching up with your way of thinking, it's not matching up with what you want. So these parallel thought processes can be very disturbing and cause lack of sleep. I could go on and on. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I have a few minutes left. I wonder if uh, uh, we can, it was a pleasure to speak to you. I wonder if uh, maybe Green Tara is a goddess, maybe Green Tara could speak, or Nim Karali Baba, or um, Ramdas, either three of, if, either of the three. It would be nice to speak to them. I'll see who's out here. Uh, everybody's out here, but they're not standing in line. That's all I can say. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks. Hold on. Um, all right. One moment. <laughs> 